talking about one very specific question under option B of NEC4 ECC contract. So that question is, when will a difference in the change of the final total quantity of work done be considered as a compensation event? We know that option B of NEC4 ECC contract is a remeasurement contract. For example, originally in the BQ, we have 100 meters of water pipes. Now it is now uh, 120 meters now on site. Then we say, let's remeasure that. Let's pay the contractor 120 meters of the water pipe. Multiply this quantity times the BQ rate. And that is what we call remeasurement because the scope is not exactly certain. However, what if the length of the water pipes is now 2,000 meters? 2,000 meters, do you want to remeasure that? Is it fair to the contractor if we simply ap apply the same BQ rate or fair to the client sometimes? Sometimes we, they, we, we think, now this is not fair. Why? Because in the tender, in the tender stage, in the BQ, you only, say, you, only say, you only say 100 meters. Now, the quantities have been changed so much now then we, we need to say, let's make it a compensation event. Where is the line? The line here in NEC4 is 0.5% of the total of the prices at the contract date. 0.5% of the tender price. And I will explain. So before we go then, let's talk about some of the basics here. What is a bill of quantities? In NEC4, we have a bill of quantities. We do not have a schedule of rates. A bill of quantities is simply uh, a number of Excel tables showing you different items in there. Which each, with each item comes a rate. With each rate comes a quantity. You multiply the rate with the quantity and you come up with a price for that item. So many items in there and therefore you add all the prices up we call that the total of the prices. If this is the total of the prices at the start of the contract, when the contract comes into existence, then what is that? That total of the prices at the contract date, isn't it the tender price? So simply put the line here, dividing whether the change in the final total quantity of work done is simply is simply 0.5% of the total of the prices at the contract date, which is the tender price. So let me explain a little bit and show you the contract for you. So on the screen here, we have option B, price contract with bill of quantities. If we go down to clause 60.4, there's a long paragraph in there. Let me read everything out and then I will break it down and explain the things for you. It says, a difference between the final total quantity of work done and the quantities data for an item in the bill of quantities is a compensation event if the following three criteria occur. The first one, the difference does not result from a change to the scope. This one is almost automatically applicable. Why? Because if that is a change to the scope, please do not use this clause. If there is a change to the scope, go to clause 60.1, bracket one in there. Is that not a compensation event? Now the project manager will make a decision. So that is the reason why we put in bullet point one in here, just to make sure, just to make sure this is not a compensation event resulting from a change to the scope because you have another clause to take care of it. The second bullet point here is the difference causes the defined cost per unit or quantity to change. So what is it talking about here? Are we not talking about the bill of quantities? Then why do you talk about the rates in here? The idea here is the more you buy, the lower the price. The more you buy, the lower the rates. Therefore, therefore this second bullet point in here tries to make sure the change in the final total quantity of work done is so huge, so huge that the rate will change. So huge that the defined cost per unit of quantity will change. If that doesn't happen, please do not notify compensation events. Please remeasure that from 100 meters to 110 meters, for example. Minor changes, remeasure that. How about 100 meters to 2000 now? Then is that not a compensation event? Maybe. Maybe, 
2,000 meters, the rate per unit of the quantity may change as well. So this second bullet point here, I would say almost all of the time, most of the time it will be fulfilled. Otherwise, why will the contractor notify compensation events? They may as well go for a remeasurement contract as well, just to avoid that long, painful process of a compensation event assessment process. So this is bullet point two. Bullet point three here is as the rates in the bill of quantities for the item multiplied by the final total quantity of work done is more than 0.5% of the total of the prices at the contract date. So you see, it is the rate times the quants. If it is more than 0.5% of the total of the prices at the contract date, which is the tender price. So let me demonstrate to you some calculations and hopefully that will explain. First of all, I need a tender price. A tender price, let's say, let's say 1 million, 1 million pounds. 0.5% of this tender price will be 5,000 pounds. And then I need a BQ. Let's say, let's say, which is, which is whatever, which is, which is 10 numbers, for example, and then I need a rate. I need a rate, let's say 20 pounds per number. And then that will give us a price 200, 10, time, 10 times 20, that's 200. So this is the price of this item. You add all the prices up in the bill quantities, you have the total of the prices. That total of the prices, uh, if that is a figure, when the contract came into existence, is that not the tender price? Therefore, we say total of the prices at the contract date, that is the tender price. Now, let's say instead of 10, instead of 10, now we have 200 numbers now. 200 numbers, is that a compensation event? Then let's test it. 200 times the BQ rate here, 200 times 20 equals 4,000 pounds. 4,000 is less than 5,000 pounds, which is 0.5% of the 1 million here. And therefore, this is not a compensation event. Then how, we, how do we pay the contractor? Instead of paying the contractor 10 numbers now, we remeasure that to 200 using the same BQ rate, we pay the contractor 4,000. You put that in the payment cert. Let's pump it up, you know what I'm going to do. So let's pump it up. So let's say now you have 600 numbers now. Is it a compensation event? Let's test it, 600 numbers. Now, because of this massive purchase, the rate may change, but we are not talking about that reduced rate. We are still using the 20 pounds Per number here to test it out. Why? Because bullet point three of clause sixty point four says so. It says the rate in the bill of quantities of the item multiplied by the final total quantity of work done. So the final quantity of work done in this time at this time is six hundred times twenty. This is twelve thousand. Three zeros. Yes. Okay. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand is more than five thousand pounds which is 0.5% of the tender price. And therefore, this is a compensation event. And therefore, how do we pay the contractor? The contract says the difference, the difference between the final total quantity of work done and the quantity stated for the item in the BQ, the difference here is a compensation event. So 600 minus 10 is a compensation event. You pay the contractor the defined cost. Not 20 now, defined cost. So let's say this defined cost due to this massive purchase instead of 20, now it becomes 10 pounds per number. And this is, so this is 590, so this is 5,900 now. Of course, you assess the compensation event by defined cost plus fee. So let's say you have a, a, a certain amount of fee on top. Calculated by what, by the way? Calculated by the fee percentage. Fee percentage. So um, that is how we assess compensation events. Do not forget about that 10. 
the 10 originally, you pay the contractor by 20, so that is 200. Add everything up, and that is how we pay the contractor. Of course, you type the plus the V. And that is how we understand clause 60.4 in option B. Same for option D. The clause is still there. It's still there. It says that option D, we are using BQ to calculate the target. But whether the change in the final total quantity of work done is a compensation event under option D, the principle is still the same. So I hope this is useful for you. Next time round, I will talk about defects. I know I will talk about defects. Years ago, years ago, I made another video called um, When is the defect a defect? I did that in Cantonese, and that was a bad video. I will do that again, this time round in English. If the contractor keeps saying, well, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, don't call that a defect. What should you do? It's a defect a defect. It's your defect list a defect certificate. It's your snack list your defect certificate. But what is a defect certificate? Let's talk about defect next time round. It's in my head. It's on my list of this YouTube channel. In fact, I will do a lot of other YouTube clips here in English for the coming months here. So stay tuned. Give me a like, subscribe, very old school. But I need some motivation here because work is so tiring. See you soon, everyone.